Welcome to uh, Essentials of Astronomy Part 2. In Essentials of Astronomy Part 1, we studied units which are used in astronomy, distance models, and we got a brief glimpse of how we use this distance models to find either the absolute magnitude of the star or the distance to the object. Uh, in this session, I will talk to you about the coordinate system. It is very essential to use a coordinate system to describe the position of any object. It is essential for observations, it is essential for communication, and so on. So, we imagine a huge dome around us, and uh, uh, since the surface of the sphere is a two-dimensional sphere, we need two coordinates to locate any position on it. So, uh, I'll be discussing three coordinate systems. First one is called the horizontal coordinate system. We use the horizon. Second, we use the equatorial coordinate system, where we use the celestial equator. And third, the galactic coordinate system. Coordinate system right? Before we comment on this, let us uh, realize one thing. Uh, a little bit of spherical trigonometry. If you have a sphere and you bisect the sphere by a plane, the cross section which you get is a circle. So if you bisect it from top, you get smaller circles and as you keep moving down and reach, say, the equator, you get the large circle and as you proceed further, you get smaller circles. So we are interested in the, that, that plane which passes through the center of the sphere so that you get the greatest circle. These are important because the shortest distances between two points on a sphere is along a great circle. They act as geodesics. So keeping this in mind, we shall draw our coordinate systems. So first we come to the horizontal coordinate system in which we imagine you have an observer O and the point overhead, right on his head, is called the Zenith. To this OZ, we draw a plane. Yeah, so we have the celestial sphere. And the point right overhead is the Zenith. You take a plane which bisects OZ perpendicularly and the great circle which you get it is called the horizon celestial horizon celestial horizon the second important point we require is for uh, depending on what location you, you are your pole star, says the pole star P is at this point. You draw a great circle going from Z, P, and the point where it meets is called the north side. And if a person is standing looking at north, at 90 degrees on his right, he'll have east, and 90 degrees on the left, he has west. And the pole point right behind is south. So I have, I am the observer O, I have a point zenith here and I take the pole star, draw a great circle and I meet the horizon. This is my north, 90 degrees to my right is east, 90 degrees to my left is west, point behind is south. And if you have any object Say for example this point, I draw a great circle passing through that and meet the 
horizon. So this is the start S and this is the point T where it meets. This angle O T O S this is called the altitude. It gives you the angle above the horizon. This is the altitude. So since this celestial dome is a two-dimensional manifold, you require two coordinates to specify a particular location. So uh, we, the second coordinate is the azimuthal angle, which is measured from this line, O N. And either you measure azimuth A westward or azimuth A eastwards. So with this altitude and A azimuth, we get the two locations on the sphere. So we say 30 degrees east or 30 degrees west or 30, 45 degrees east, 45 degrees west. Or another way azimuth is taken when you don't want to specify east or west. By convention it is always measured eastwards. So you measure the angle this way. If you are using azimuth east and west then it goes from 0 to 180 east, 0 to 180 west and the 0 east and 0 west in the same point which is the south point. But if you just want to do away with azimuth east or west written, then by default you just take it along the east direction and you go all around 360 degrees. So this is a very convenient uh, way of giving coordinates, but it's a very local coordinate system. Because if you move from one latitude to another, the altitude of an object can totally vary. So this is good if, if you are conveying to a friend in your same city, you want to say that there is an object in the sky and you want to say there is a comet in the sky and they would ask where is it and you would say it is 20 degrees above the horizon and you would say from north point you go northeast and 30 degrees or 45 degrees out. So using that you can locate these points. But remember, Earth, which we live on, is a sphere and depending on where the observer is standing, the zenith would get defined here. So the person who is on certain latitude, this would be the tangential plane to him, this would be his horizon, and this would be the zenith. And for the person who is on some other location, uh, his horizon, his or her horizon would be this. So obviously all the coordinates will be different for the two observers. If the earth was flat, then it wouldn't have mattered, but this is not the case. That's why, though it is convenient and it is okay to use it very locally, uh, it, it doesn't hold globally. If, if a person sees an object at 30 degrees altitude in Hyderabad, if observing it from Bombay or in Delhi, it will not be at the same altitude. So instead, uh, what we use is the equatorial coordinate system. Equatorial coordinate system. And again, I am drawing this celestial sphere with the observer sitting right at the center and uh, the point above obviously is again the zenith point but we will not take OA as the reference line but rather I will look at the pole star Polaris and I will use this as my reference line and I will draw a plane perpendicular to OP rather than OZ like in the previous case and I get a great circle and this is called the celestial equator. Celestial equator. This happens to be Earth's equator extended to meet the celestial sphere. And we do exactly the same thing 
if you have any object at some point, we draw a great circle passing from P and we see where it meets the equator this time and the angle which yeah, so if this is our S and this is our U this U O S is taken as the declination but we require one more coordinate to define its position on this here and for that we have to take the right ascension and the right ascension is defined as follows there is a specific direction which is called the first point of Aries which is taken as a point and we measure along the equator this angle alpha so alpha is called the right ascension while delta is called the declination. So using alpha and dec, we get uh, the exact location of any object. So alpha dec will give location. Okay. So if you have any object here, I draw a grid circle. I see the angle it makes with the equator. This will be a declination. And then I see the projected one, what is the angle uh, we get from the first part of Aries. So this coordinate system is more universal. It's because uh, the zenith from a particular location to another may vary, but the direction, the OP axis remains the same direction. So your, one of your exercises will be to find a relation between the horizontal coordinate system and the right ascension declination. So I'll drop both the coordinates in the same sphere just to repeat what it was. We have the celestial sphere, we have the observer right in the center and the point uh, right above is the zenith point. The plane perpendicular to OZ gives us the horizon. And for any object, you draw a great circle and you calculate this angle, which gives you the altitude. And from the pole star, we get the north point and we measure this angle in the horizon horizontal plane to get your azimuth. So altitude azimuth. And the same thing if I take this axis OP and draw a great circle passing through perpendicular to this and I project any object onto this plane and measure this angle which will give the declination and from the first point of Aries I measure the angle to get right ascension and declination. Okay, so obviously a little bit of geometry and we will be able to uh, find the relations between them. And a few things of importance which I will going to point out is uh, how do we draw your solution sphere is very important and much depends on uh, where is the latitude of the place? So, here I have my celestial sphere. And the zenith point is right above, no problem. But depending on the latitude of the place you are in, your position of the pole star will change. So the angle which the horizon makes with the OP where the P is, is the latitude of the place. So if I am at 17 degrees, then I draw this at 17 degrees. If I am at 23, I draw it at 23. And, and 
Once this angle is defined, the plane which is perpendicular to this defines your uh, celestial equator and you measure this. Okay. So, this is my horizon, this is my And obviously this is 23 and a half degrees. Both of these are inclined at 23 and a half degrees. And uh, the first point of Aries is say in this direction. And due to the precession of Earth's axis, the first point of Aries has now shifted to the PC's constellation. But all the same, it's still called the first point of Aries because you measure uh, right ascension from, from this reference point. So, this is my OP, and for any object, I draw a great circle, and this is my declination. And this is my right ascension. This one. So you can even write in terms of the arc. And this arc is called the hour angle. Hour angle. So either you can use hour angle or right ascension to specify the location of the point. And uh, our angle indicates how much time it requires for the object to reach this point. So if you draw a great circle which passes through zenith, the pole star, this so the, the stars the stars would be moving along this curve. So obviously when they reach this point, when they reach the this great circle, this is said to be culminating. This is called the upper culmination point and this is the lower culmination point. So when this object reaches the maximum height it would reach, it is called, the time is said to be culminating. There is a higher it will go in the sky on that particular day and then it will, uh, and it will come down. And in one day, due, because of the rotation of the earth, it will complete one revolution. Okay, so, now coming to the third coordinate system, the galactic coordinate system. This is used when we want to specify the location of say our sun or a certain star cluster or a globular cluster in terms of the galactic reference frame. So we will be studying what our galaxy uh, looks like. So uh, the galaxy to which our sun belongs is called the Milky Way galaxy. And we will study in detail later that it has three components. It has a disk, it has a bulge, and it has a halo. So any point in the galaxy disk, the direction towards the galactic center is taken as zero longitude. And as you move in the disk of the galaxy, you get 5, 10, 90 degrees. And this anti-galactic center is 180 degrees and so on it back to 360 degrees. So this gives you the longitude along the disk and the height above the disk of a galaxy will give us the latitude. So we get the uh, galactic longitude and um, galactic long latitude which will give us the position in the galactic frame of reference. This is important to locate in terms of the galactic center. So with this I will start this video. And we will discuss this uh, in more detail. I will give a set of questions and solutions to a few so that you understand how to work out the other ones. 
Thank you.